This is a revision presentation on how we use the Fisher equation to understand the process of quantitative easing. Let's start with the Fisher equation itself. The first key thing about the Fisher equation is it's an accounting identity, it's a statement of truth. What we've got is four different bits to it. We have M, and M is our kind of quantity of money in the economy, so that's affected by the central bank as it prints new money. That's why it's useful for analysing quantitative easing. We then got V. Now V might seem like quite a complicated idea, but all we're looking at is how much, on average, is each unit of currency spent in an economy each year. So in the UK, we're looking on average how often is each pound spent. So it kind of measures the speed of the circulation of money around the economy. So that left hand side is all about money. But then on our right hand side we have something a bit more concerned with production. We have P which is our average price level and Y which is our output by volume. Now output by volume on its own is real GDP so once we add in the price level element to it it becomes nominal GDP. GDP measured in terms of the actual quantity of money being spent each year. Now to demonstrate why uh, this is an accounting identity, I want to set up the same economy looking at it from those two points of view. One in terms of money and how quickly it circulates, and on the other side in terms of uh, production of goods and services at different prices. Now our economies, you know, they simplify it down and pretend they're producing only chairs. So let's think about the left hand side of the equation first of all. Well let's say the money supply is a thousand pounds, so that's M, our money supply. Now, each pound, then, we're going to say is going to be spent, on average, five times a year. Then we're calculating MV, so we take £1,000, times it by the five times it's spent each year, and we get £5,000. And what that 5000 tells us is that's the amount of money that's being spent in the economy each year. £1,000, each pound going around five times, £5,000 of the spending. And what about on the PY side? Well, let's say we're only producing chairs, so we've only got one price as part of our price level, and let's say that price is £25. And our level of production, Y, output by volume, is 200 chairs. Then to work out PY, all we do is we take the £25 and times it by the 200, and we get £5,000. But notice here, we're talking about exactly the same thing. We've got 200 chairs that are purchased each year at £25 each. That makes £5,000 total spending. So again, that £5,000 is just the total amount of money spent each year. All we've done is represent the same thing in two different ways. On the left-hand side, we've measured it in terms of money and how quickly it's spent. On the right-hand side, we've measured it in terms of production and price level. So let's use this to have a look at what's going on with quantitative easing. Well, in our short run situation, we're always looking at the same thing, which is an increase in the money supply. So the M component of that left hand side will go up. We assume for this that the velocity of money stays the same. And what we expect to happen in the short run is that people will take this money, they'll spend it, we'll get an increase in aggregate demand, and from that rightward shift of the aggregate demand curve, we get increases in the price level and we get increases in real national output, which is our Y. So again, all we're imagining here is a positive shift of the aggregate curve, and as we'd always expect, that leads to an increase in the price level, inflation, and leads to some economic growth through the increase in real national output. The long run situation is slightly different. And what's different here is we're thinking about long run level of production. Now, we still use the same basic process, an increase in the money supply, assuming that the velocity of money stays the same. The key thing to remember now is that Y won't be affected by the money supply. The only things that affect output in the long run, that's normal aggregate supply, are the four long run factors of production, land, labour, capital and enterprise. Money is not one of those things, it's not actually a real thing we use for production. So we expect Y to stay the same, and so all we'll see is that we get an increase in the price level. Now you should be able to see this for yourself. If you draw a diagram that shows a positive shift of an aggregate demand curve, but you use a long run aggregate supply curve instead of the short run aggregate supply curve, what you'll see is we get an increase in the price level, but the level of output day at the level of long run aggregate supply because it's a vertical curve. So all we get in the long run from QE is more inflation. It shouldn't affect output in the long run. 
Now, the final thing, though, to consider that's useful about the Fisher equation for quantitative easing is thinking about how it might not have any impact at all. Now, we follow the same principle. We have an increase in the money supply. But now, instead of the money being spent, consumers, businesses, banks save it instead. So what we've got here is perhaps an economy that has a very low level of confidence. People are very pessimistic about the future. They're very cautious. So this new money that you print and distribute, rather than it being spent, rather than it being put into investment or consumer spending or some component of aggregate demand, it just gets saved instead. But now that the money is being saved, essentially how we understand this is that the rate at which money is circulating around the economy starts to fall because money is being saved rather than spent. So now the velocity of money falls. And now we get a much different effect. Because the decrease in V has banged out the increase in N, actually the right-hand side stays exactly the same. We don't get the inflation. We don't get an increase in real national output. And this is a good way of explaining why, in a current situation like in the UK, where we have quite low confidence, or at least over the last four years we have, why quantitative easing didn't generate growth and why it didn't generate high inflation. Because the new money that was being produced was just being saved. And if V falls as M goes up, because the money's being saved, we don't expect there to get any change in aggregate demand. In essence, our aggregate demand curve has stayed in exactly the same place.